Hey, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Becca and I make videos all about intentional living and faith life and organization. So if you like those kinds of things, then definitely stick around. In today's video, I'm showing you how I use my monthly power sheets to go after my goals. I've been using these for about five years and I've learned a lot along the way. So grab a beverage. I am currently drinking these Element Sparkly drinks. They are new and they actually mailed these to my house because I'm a pretty consistent Element subscriber. So anyway, this is the Black Cherry Lime and I've had this one before, it's pretty good, but I am past my caffeine hour. It's actually almost five o'clock, so I do not need any coffee or anything like that. So just drinking water and keeping hydrated. But I'm gonna open up to the month of April. We are in May right now, but I wanted to to show you a completed month and just kind of walk you through my process and how I use this tool every single month to achieve my goals and really just break my big goals and dreams down into practical, actionable steps and live the life that I am called to. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up to the month of April. So here is what a month will look like when it is completely filled out and the month is over. And then I like to put these different percentage marks to see what percent of each daily action item out of the month did I actually complete. So this first one, for example, Bible study, I completed this task every day except for one. So basically I divided 29 days out of 30 since there were 30 in the month and that got me 97. So 97% for the month, I will take that. So starting out at the very top here, this is the start of the tending list page, which starts out with encouraging words and what the monthly priority is. So for me, I like to take different quotes that I save from email newsletters, books, different things that I have in a running list in my Notion, and I will just kind of pick one out that seems to fit the theme for that specific month. So for the month of April, I said, even if it takes years, start now. And this is super relevant to my YouTube journey because right now I am just like, I got to just press record. Like I talked about in my video, kind of explaining my YouTube journey. I took a good amount of time off and now I'm like, I want to get back into it and I just need to start. So this quote from James Clear really stood out to me. Next up was my priority for the month, and this has been a goal of mine for such a long time to just drink water. <laughs> I feel like I am never thirsty, and it's so hard for me to actually drink water. So I actually found this app called Water Llama, and that was truly a game changer for me. That is what actually helped me reach this goal. And if you can see down here, I hit this goal of 80 ounces of water per day every single day for the month of April and that has already continued on into May. So I'm so happy about that and the app Water Llama, it just helps me to break the goal down even more. So that was huge and I'll talk more about that when we get down to the daily action items. So for the month of April, I chose to set three monthly goals that are related to my overall yearly goals. And I'm not going to get into my yearly goals today, but basically they all relate. So it starts with the overview of what your goals are for the whole year. And then the point of power sheets is to really break it down into very actionable steps. So a lot of people will use this page here on the left-hand side to kind of do a rough draft of different ideas, but this is really working for me. So at this point in the year, I have found that these habits that I'm tracking, these are the things that I want to keep tracking month over month, so I don't feel the need to change it. So I basically just copied these from the month of March and did not need to fill this out. So I set this monthly goal of drink 80 ounces of water 80% of the month because I knew I needed something more than putting it here in the daily action items. To give you an example, in the month of March, this is what we were looking at, okay? I drink 80 ounces of water three days out of the month. This was terrible, and this has been my reality for so long. I just have not been able to figure out how to reach my daily goal of water intake. So I decided I needed to just play around with how I was setting that specific goal. So what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to keep, I'm going to roll this goal over for the next month, but I'm going to try other things too. So... I decided to set a monthly action item of, 
Okay, at the end of the month, since I know that I tallied this up, I wanted this number to be over 80%. That forced me to figure out why is this not working and what do I need to do to actually make this goal happen, which I will get to once we get to the daily section. Some other goals that fell into similar areas for me that I just realized once I was in the month of April, I set these goals as like bigger intentions for the entire year and I just wasn't making the progress that I wanted to make. I was like, okay, I need to set monthly action items to change the way that I'm thinking about these goals rather than just putting them into a daily or weekly item. A couple other examples of this were make progress on camera roll. With my camera roll, it gets so crazy. I create content. I film content for multiple businesses. I film content for my own content creation. My camera roll is insane. And I'm like, I need to get this thing under control because it's so unorganized and that makes me feel very chaotic. So that's why I put here, make progress on camera roll. Because with this goal, I didn't know what progress I needed to make yet, but I just knew, okay, at the end of the month, even if it's the smallest thing, I want to be able to say I made progress on it. And I was like, I'm not going to hold myself to a strict, like, specific goal on how that happens. I just need to know that at the end of the month, I made progress. And whatever that means to me, I want to be able to check this off. And that's kind of what I did. Same thing for content creation. This has been somewhere where I felt stuck. And in months past, I would put content creation as a goal. I think I had it in March. Yeah, I had that goal for the month of March, daily content creation, and I just wasn't able to track it like I am with other goals. So I was like, okay, that's not working. So I'm going to put that as a monthly goal. And with Power Sheets, one of their mantras is just little by little progress and how that adds up. So sometimes that's what needs to happen is we need to put these like very baby steps or just simple goals to make progress. So how I made progress on my content creation this month was I just decided I'm going to brainstorm why I feel stuck and how do I need to get unstuck. And that was my progress. And here we are filming content. So I would say this worked. Okay, moving down to the weekly action items and rhythms. So I've got these pretty much on lock, which I'm really excited about. And another tip from Power Sheets is if you feel like you have your goals pretty well handled, it's probably a good idea to move them off and put new things on here that you feel like you are trying to make progress on. That is totally a personal preference. For me, I just started finding consistency in these rhythms. So for me, it's actually very motivating to rewrite the exact same weekly rhythms month to month to keep the momentum going. So the first one is my weekly reset, which I have a video here on YouTube about, so I will link that. But that is just me checking off once a week, did I do some form of a weekly reset, whether it was my full weekly reset or it was even just a simple, more minimal version where I at least feel like I was reviewing my past week, planning for the new week, and just able to have that touch point once a week. Next up is my meal prep. So I don't get crazy about meal prep like I used to. I used to meal prep actual meals for the week. This right now in this season of my life means that I'm prepping my fruit for the week. So I'm washing my berries and I'm cutting up my strawberries and like prepping more things like that. So that way I'm ready for the week and I can kind of grab different ingredients that I need to eat healthier meals throughout the week. But I'm not in a season where I am like full on cooking and prepping chicken and rice and veggies and all those things. Like that's just not how this specific season is for me, but I still consider it a win if I can know that, okay, I am prepping the things that I need to prep for the week, so I'll cross that off and then that's a win. And I did that every single week, which was awesome. Next up, these are two that are related to my marriage category. So the first one is marriage meeting and then the next one is date night. So these two goals are basically for me to check off that once a week, I had a meeting with my husband and we kind of reviewed the budget for the week and reviewed each other's schedules and just kind of had that time to check in with each other and just get on the same page for the week ahead. Then another goal is prioritizing weekly date nights. So this could look like dinner out, this could be a movie night in, just as long as we're spending quality time together, like that is what we will consider a win to be able to check off this date night. And we did that every single week this month as well. 
The last one is texting one friend per week. It is so easy for me to get lost in my work and in my weekly routines that I am just not a big texter. I'm not the best at responding to text messages. That is something I want to get better at, but I want to be more intentional with my friendships and this is a way for me to very practically do that. This is in my relationships category. And again, going back to the concept of just simple little habits, they all add up. So this one right here of texting one friend per week, not even per day, this is what I need to just keep that habit of being intentional with my relationships. Looking back at the month of April, I would consider this a huge win that... 100% of my weekly goals I was able to check off. All right, last we are moving down to the daily action items or habits. A lot of the habits that I am working on right now are related to my health and fitness. So that's why they're all in this like blue-ish like periwinkle color. That's kind of my color coding system too. So like the periwinkle-ish color, I don't know if that's what that is, but That color is related to health and then this orangish color is related to faith and they basically just all have different colors that are related to the like bigger picture or the bigger like life area that I'm referring to. The first one here is Bible study. This has been a habit that I am really proud to say I have built a lot of consistency with. Last year, I committed to reading the Bible in a year and I did that with a tool from The Daily Grace. It was an amazing Bible study. It was chronological order. I highly recommend it if that's a goal that you are working on. I missed one day for the month of April, so 97% uh, completion, which is awesome. Next up is the water habit. So I told you I would talk more about this once we got to this point. So I am so excited that I've finally figured out how to actually drink enough water every day. And for me right now, that is 80 ounces of water. I will probably up this soon, but I wanted to just stay consistent with a number that is good for me. And I knew that I could realistically achieve once I got the habit figured out. So I feel like this is a big tip out there, but the first thing is to just find a water bottle that is like fun and exciting and like makes you want to drink water. For me, it's the Hydro Jug water bottle. Um, I used to have a Stanley, but I switched over to this one because it's actually spill proof and it still has a straw and the top of the lid is see-through. So I can see my progress of my water, like how much water I'm drinking throughout the day. And then the other thing that I did was I downloaded the app called Water Llama. And this allowed me to mark off where I was at with drinking my water throughout the day. It also allows you to set up reminders that ping you. And if you want, you can also put this on your Apple Watch. And this was honestly what helped me so much was getting those reminders throughout the day. I just needed that extra push. And then that's really how I was able to figure out how to get enough water in. And then also I use an app called Streaks. And that is what helps me to also stay very consistent with the daily goals because I am very motivated by seeing a streak. So like watching those habits build up one day after another and keeping that streak going, that's very motivating to me. Basically, I paired up my water bottle with Water Llama and the streak app because I'm not always checking these off day to day. I'm usually in my power sheets like once a week. So I'll basically transfer my progress from the streaks app into my power sheets. And that is how I was able to hit 100%. So super exciting. Next up is I'm trying to sleep at least seven and a half hours per night. I did that 50% of this month. And this does not mean in bed for seven and a half hours. This means sleeping. So I do track my sleep with an aura ring. Uh, If you'd like to see a review on that, I'd be happy to do that. But basically this is me just tracking like how much actual sleep am I getting Uh, because that's a goal of mine is to get seven and a half. So this one is still a work in progress. I feel like I have a decently consistent bedtime. So far it's not going the best. (laughs) So I would like to improve upon this. So hopefully in May I'll be able to get this number up. Next up is taking creatine. So this is also a health goal. All of these are health and fitness related. I take creatine every single day in my protein shakes. So I feel like that's been my way to get consistent with it because I'm already consistent with having a protein shake every day after I work out, which is the movement. So these kind of go hand in hand. I'll work out and then have a protein shake, which has my creatine so I can check both of those off. And I also count movement 
as any kind of like stretching or recovery. So I used to track literally just my workouts and um, I wouldn't track like Sundays because I don't work out on Sundays, but I changed this to movement because I wanted to create a mindset about keeping active and keeping moving versus just having like hardcore workouts every day because there is a time and place for recovery. And for me, that's on Sundays. So I work out five to six times a week. And then the days that I'm not working out, I am doing recovery. So lots of stretching, mobility, stuff like that. So I count that as movement. So that is what helps me to keep this streak going. As long as I'm like doing something active every day, I will count that. And that's just what works for me. And then on the days that I don't have a protein shake because I didn't do like a full on workout, I will put creatine in uh, like a greens juice and I'll drink it that way because you can put creatine really in whatever. I've been at 100% for both of those and it's still motivating for me to see this daily progress add up. So I am repeating these habits in May as well. So that concludes today's video on how I use power sheets on a monthly basis to keep going after my big long-term dreams and goals. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. And if you haven't seen this video yet, then I definitely recommend checking it out and I can't wait to see you in the next one.